Hello everybody and welcome to my afterthoughts video regarding the third Rocky movie. Man, did I enjoy that. As you guys know, I loved Rocky 1 and I loved Rocky 2 and I loved Rocky 3. Fantastic stuff. I know that a lot of people say that Rocky 1 and 2 is kind of like one big movie, you know. But I feel that Rocky 1, 2 and 3 is like one big movie. I mean, it continues. They build on each other, you know, and that's why it works so great. And I have to give kudos again to Stallone for writing the screenplay. I mean, this guy really knows what he's doing. He knows about story, he knows about structure, and he knows about the plot points and everything. Really great work. Now, when I talk about structure, you know, I'm talking about the beginning, the middle and the end, or in screenplay terms, it would be the first act, the second act and the third act with two plot points and the midpoint of the story, which is usually the lowest point of the character. So he really knows how to write that very well. So let's take a look at the beginning. Right away, we establish Rocky's life. He is now, of course, heavyweight champion of the world. He's living the good life. He um, is rich and famous. He has had 10 title defenses, which probably takes about five to 10 years. And uh, he has a comfortable life. He even gets honored by the city of Philadelphia. He gets a statue, wonderful. He thinks about retiring and everything is great until Clubber Lang shows up. Now, Clubber Lang, he has been secretly training Lyda Maniac He's, he's, he's hungry, he's dangerous, and he challenges Rocky to a fight. He even tells the world that, hey, Rocky, you're not really a champion anymore. I mean, come on. Everything was kind of rigged to keep Clubber down, you know, and Rocky didn't really have any serious challenges and no real contenders. So he challenges him openly and provokes him to the point where Rocky actually publicly accepts a title fight. Now, let me say something about Clubber, because a lot of people said, I remember, that Clubber is kind of, it's not a real character, kind of a caricature, you know, and I have to, I have to agree with that. He is very one-dimensional. But we also have to keep in mind, the story is not about Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang is just a character who serves a purpose, you know. We don't, we, we are not emotionally involved with Club Lang's character. So we don't really need to know why he is so angry, what happened in his childhood, and so on and so on, because we are invested with Rocky and the other characters, not Club Lang. So I think it's not necessary to make him very three-dimensional. I think keeping him the way it was, he is just this formidable um, opponent, a very dangerous man, and that's all we really need to know. I, I think, as a screenwriter myself, I think all good. I have no problem with that, the way Club Lang was established. Anyway, so this confrontation there brings us to the first plot point, which is the gateway to the second act. But that scene is right after the celebration, after Rocky receives the statue, he goes home and finds Mickey packing his suitcases and saying that he goes on a permanent vacation. Of course, Rocky is confused, asks him, why are you, are you doing this? And he pushes him so far that Mickey releases another truth bomb. I have to say, Mickey is a great actor and he is probably one of the most honest characters I have ever seen. Love the character. He tells Rocky that, you know what? Your fighting career is over and he admits, and that's the big one, he admits that those 10 title defenses he had, those opponents were hand-picked. You know, I mean, hearing that must be, for Rocky, of course, psychologically speaking, brutal to hear that those opponents were hand-picked to make sure Rocky stays healthy and he, he holds on to the title as long as possible. Rocky was completely destroyed, devastated. He couldn't believe it. You know, he sits down and Mickey tells him, look, you just, you got civilized, you know, and uh, you're living the good life. You're not hungry anymore. You don't have it anymore. You can't win against Clover. And Rocky, of course, he doesn't really want to believe that. And he convinces and persuades Mickey to train him one more time for the Clover fight, you know, and even threatens him to tell the world that Mickey hasn't bought any new underwear in 10 years, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that's great. There's just so much humor in those Rocky movies if you're open for it, you know, it's fantastic. So ultimately, Mickey says, yes, okay, let's do it together. And that's the first plot point. And now we're moving to the second act. <laughs> act two starts out with a training montage. Once again, great montage. We see Rocky having way too much fun preparing for this fight. He's at the hotel. He uh, flirts with the fans and it just kind of, you know, takes it way too lightly. He kind of turned into Apollo, you know, who took it way too lightly, didn't really concentrate too much. And then we see Chuck's a post. We see Club Lang training and he trains like an animal. This guy is crazy. He is hungry. He really is a scary character. And then of course we have the knight of the fight, you know, and unfortunately Mickey has a heart attack and they bring him to the locker room. And this is of course a very, very bad timing for Rocky. He doesn't know what to do. And again, at this point, I have to say it's great riding again, because remember when we saw the, the charity fight they had, Rocky against uh, Hulk Hogan, which was also a lot of fun with some great stunts, I have to say. And at this event, we also see Mickey actually having a little heart attack, you know, so that's called foreshadowing. So now when Mickey has another heart attack, it doesn't really come out of the blue. It's not like, oh, how convenient. No, it was established that he has a problem with his heart. And like I said, he ends up in the locker room. Rocky doesn't know what to do. He can't fight. And he even asks Adrian, which is a very, it's very nice that he, in the moment of crisis, he turns to Adrian and asks her, what am I supposed to do? You know, and of course, Mickey, <laughs> in his way, he, he uh, faces Rocky and tells me, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a champion. You know exactly what to do. Go and fight. And of course, Rocky goes and fights Clubber. And we all know what happened. It was a brutal fight with brutal sound effects. I mean, Rocky just got destroyed in the second round. Um, knocked out. Brutal, brutal. And then he goes back to the locker room talking to Mickey. Um, it tells him that, yes, everything is over. It was a knockout in the second, uh, second round. And of course, he does not tell him that Rocky was the one being knocked out. And the old man even asks, so we did everything right and Rocky nods, you know, and then Mickey passes on and that, oh my gosh, this was just soul crushing for the audience, for me, for, for Rocky. It was brutal moment seeing this man just breaking down because of his coach who just passed away. It was brutal, brutal scene. And of course, that brings us to the low point of the character, which is the midpoint of the movie. I mean, Rocky has just lost the fight. He has lost the title. He has lost his coach. He has lost his confidence. Rocky is done. You know, it's, it's, it's brutal to, to see him like that, but it really looked like everything was over. The only good thing was Apollo showed up and a friendship started to build. And Apollo told him, look, I know what you're going through. I know how it is, but I can help you win against Clubber. And you know, Rocky is curious and he agrees and they start training together, but you can clearly see Rocky's heart or Rocky's mind is not in it. It's terrible. Everything is just half-heartedly done, you know, he's working out and it, it doesn't look good. And at least we have some humor by Polly's character. There's a lot of humor in this, in this movie. You know, he says stuff like, I don't like those people talking about the black fighters at the gym, you know, and Rocky says, well, maybe they don't like you either. And he's all surprised. Why? What did I do to them? You know? Uh, it's just too funny. Or, or, or Polly tells Apollo, look, Rocky is not a colored fighter. He doesn't have any rhythm, you know, forget about this exercise. Or he's being asked, hey, can Rocky swim? And Polly just, with a name like Rock. <laughs> and I guess at this point, I should also mention that Polly is a fantastic character and he is a fantastic actor. So, all this, of course, brings us then towards the second plot point, which separates uh, the second act and the third act. And the second plot point is, of course, at the beach. You know, you, you see Apollo and Rocky run at the beach and 
and Rocky just he he gets slower and slower because his mind is not in it and he gets he even stops running he just walks away and we all know and he knows it's just over you know it's Apollo even says so it's over and that's when Adrian approaches him Rocky stands there looking over the ocean completely destroyed you know no confidence nothing and Adrian engages in this dialogue I mean oh, man Hands down, this is my favorite scene. This, this is my favorite scene. I, I hardly cut anything out because the dialogue, word by word, was so engaging. It was so powerful. I only cut a little bit of that scene. It was so powerful. I mean, Adrian pushes him and, and Rocky says, look, I just don't want it anymore. She pushes more. Well, I don't want to lose what I got. She pushes more all the way to to the truth, you know, where Rocky even says, Adrian, what are you putting me through? You know, and then she pushes further until then finally says, okay, you want to hear the truth? I'm afraid. The first time in my life, I'm afraid, you know, do you want to destroy me? You want to break me down? And this is just such a powerful moment. I couldn't believe it. We finally got to the truth. He finally, you know, Expo uh, revealed that that he is afraid and and for him of course being such a strong man this this is is a no-no to be afraid and it was heartbreaking to see that but adrian you know he, she she built him up again she told him look i'm afraid too it's okay you're human people are afraid it's normal you know and she tells him that he should take on that rematch because of him not because of the money, not because of the title, not because of the, of the public or society or the audience, not because of her, for him. You need to fight for yourself to confront that fear. And even if you lose, it doesn't matter that much anymore because you confronted your fear and I know you can live with that. And man, such a powerful speech. And Rocky, Rocky even asks her, how did you get so tough? And she says, I live with a fighter. I mean, this is a fantastic second plot point, which brings us into the third act. The third act again starts with a training montage, but this time this training montage is different. It's much more energetic. It's much more inspirational. I was pumped just watching it. It was just amazing really amazing and Adrian was there to cheer him on you know and I, I gotta say about Adrian by the way that her evolution as the character you know is amazing I mean she is a great actress as well and I, I don't think I have said that yet but uh, she evolved from this ultra shy woman morphed into this classy rich lady you know and she plays it perfectly so that was great that was uh, part of the montage and then of course the montage ends at the beach where um, Apollo and Rocky run against again on the beach and Rocky finally surpasses him and they jump into the water and they embrace each other uh, in triumph and I, I thought that was such a great moment seeing those two strong men embracing each other in triumph and that was the end of the montage really great and then of course the fight happened and we all know how it ended it was a great fight a brutal intense back and forth and clobber lang got beaten the living beep out of him and it was great rocky had this strategy of just tiring this guy out and overwhelm him and that's what he did and ultimately he won by knockout in the third round and we were jumping up and down uh, if not visually at least inside we were jumping up and down it was just awesome and then of course we had the little add-on at the end um, Rocky owed Apollo a favor and they ended up at the gym where nobody else was around and I guess they decided to fight each other and it was just fun to see those men fighting each other I mean we wanted to see more but you know that the point was that the friendship was building and that those two are really tight now so that was a great ending I absolutely loved Rocky 3 and I can't wait to see Rocky 4 uh, really it's gonna be fantastic I hope you guys will be there for that too and I will see you soon Bye-bye.